we must give respect to these great people that we have. They're not going to be with us forever. So that we have got to be 
realize that we have got to become aware of how important it is. We are living in a very different world. We are living in a world where there are more computers than people. That point was reached in 1982 when Bell Labs reported there were more than 4, 4 billion computers on Earth and there are not yet 4 billion people. So we are living in a world that is going to change dramatically and a world in which we have to become very much aware of the power and capacity we have both for improving life and destroying it. And at the moment, many people who are in charge of science, in spite of the fact that it advances the world, or really the great majority of the world, still becomes poorer and poorer. So it really depends on a different kind of consciousness. We are not just intent on improving our technology, but improving the kind of human being that controls that technology. Because in the final analysis, civilization is not technology. Civilization is the humanization of the human. And if therefore as that technology advances, the human shrinks, then that technology will destroy the human. This in fact we saw very clearly in the war where the Germans were tops. They were the marvelous great scientists. When I was being driven to speak at NASA, one of the NASA scientists was explaining to me that if they had not seized half of the German scientists, they would have no space program. The Russians seized half and the Americans seized half. So it was Hitler's scientists that made it possible for us to get into space so quickly. But what happened to the Germans? They were these marvelous people in advanced technologically, but they have become brutes, barbarians. So that we have to become aware of the fact that civilization has advanced to become more sophisticated with that technology. This is our chance. And we have got to look very seriously at our history because it is only through history that we can become aware of our enormous contribution and become confident of what we can do and what we cannot do. That is the most important thing. Our young people, and when I say young I mean people up to 50, that is very young in the modern world. Um, Gorbachev, for example, who is now in charge of Russia, is considered to be one of the most extraordinarily young men of the world. Leaders are usually in their 70s and 80s. It is very unusual to find a man close on 60 who is a leader. A major leader, that is a very young man. And that's something that I have to stress because I am very startled by people who by the time they're mid in their mid-twenties because they didn't get a break, they say, well, I had it. I lost my chance. When I was 28, I entered university. I got my B.A. at 32. And I was no special student. When I was nine, I, had a, 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 I was struck by a terrible disease which killed half of my country. I lost all my friends. Part of my brain was damaged. It didn't stop me and it didn't make me think that, oh, I am lost, it's all over. I hear this over and over again. I even hear people going about talking about him, AIDS will kill all of us. That is pure nonsense, defeatist thinking, because Europe was struck by a disease worse than AIDS. It killed half the European population. And it was not like AIDS where it was restricted for a long time to a few people. Every morning when the Europeans woke up in certain parts of Europe, the way they collect garbage, they collected bodies. Body, every household was struck by that disease. So you have to understand that, and they did not have the science we have today where we could say, well, in five or ten years we will find a cure. There was no cure. It had to live itself out. It had to destroy, practically wiped out the population of Europe. So we have got to realize that if we are going to go back into history,